Some people driving by saw men with guns here on the basketball court and called police. When police showed up, some suspects with open warrants were arrested on the spot, but much of the cast ran. Two months later, the video was released online, and it was a hit. 20 have been charged with illegal possession of weapons, including rapper NFL cartel... More than 20 people were arrested just because of this music video. Today, I will show you the story of Max O'Cream and the song Hoover, a very extraordinary story which finally ended in an escape. Comment and rate this video if you want to support me. That would really mean a lot to me. Let's start with the video. Max O'Cream is a rapper from Houston in Texas. His childhood was pretty easy until the age of 12 because his father made good money with crooked business. However, Max O'Cream did not know how his father earned his money at the time, but that changed with an event that put his whole life upside down. One day, the police stormed the home of young Max O'Cream and arrested his father. Shortly before this incident, the family moved to a suburb where there are no gangs. But since the father was gone, Max O'Cream and his family had to go back to the hood, to Elif. Now his mother was responsible for the supply alone. And the money got very short, very quickly. For this reason, it didn't take long before Max O'Cream started earning his money on the street. He and his boys all came from other streets, and Houston is full of gangs. It may well be that there is a completely different gang on a neighboring street. That means Crips, Bloods, Latin Kings, everything is right next to each other. And this whole gangbanging doesn't exist there. It's all about cliques. And for this reason, Max O'Cream and his boys founded their own clique, the Cream Clique. Gang affiliations didn't matter here, as I said. They have Bloods, Crips, Vice Lords, Gangster Disciples, basically everything. My gang, I'm father who against the Crip. Uh -huh. That's my gang. Yeah. My clique is Cream Clique. Shit, we got... We got bloods, we got vice lords in it, you right. know what I'm saying? We got cribs, we got beat, we don't want to be tripping on the gang shit. Right. And this click finally started releasing music. And so did Maxo. The first song I could find of him is LeBron South Beach from 2011. And Maxo Cream's breakthrough actually only succeeded him two releases later with the remix to Kendrick Lamar's classic Rigo Mortis. Maxo Cream quickly gained a lot of fame in the scene he is a street rapper who is incredibly lyrical. All these rappers junkies talking like they do dealers. One song a scam the next song they kill us. In the following years, he was able to work with the most diverse artists for this reason. I mean, he worked with Playboy Cardi before he had his breakthrough. And this is what happened. One evening, Max O had a club show in Texas. This evening, there was a lot of beef. And for this reason, there were three fights with three different groups. And in the middle of one of these fights, Cardi just randomly went to Max O'Cream and told him that he enjoys his music introduced himself. After that, Cardi and Max O'Cream beat up these other guys. Niggas at this last show, Cardi ran up to me. Like, hey, yo, bro, I'm playing for Cardi. I fuck with you, bro. Let me know. Woo, woo, woo. You know what I'm saying? So I got to let my like, nah, he good. He with us. Woo, woo. This is how the feature was created together with Dash, which today has over 75 million clicks on YouTube. This meeting of Playboy Cardi and Max O'Cream was long before Cardi's fame. At this point, Cardi didn't even get to know Rocky, because this meeting also came about through Max O. Max O'Cream had a music video shoot in the villa of Rocky, and this is where Cardi and Rocky met. Investigators say these men were using boxes just like this to ship drugs all the way across the country. What they didn't know is that they were being watched the whole time. But then came the shock in 2016. Max O'Cream and seven other members of the Cream clique were arrested during large-scale house searches. They were accused of sending marijuana from California to Texas by mail in large quantities. During the house searches, a total of 38 kilograms of weed, 2,000 Xanax pills and 13 weapons were found. In addition, money and jewelry were confiscated. Max O'Cream was able to pay his caution in the amount of $200,000 and was a free man again relatively quickly. But because of these accusations, he was forbidden to return to his old hood because the investigators feared that the rapper would only cause unrest in the neighborhood. Max O'Cream was also banned from entering Canada. In addition, he was prosecuted for a very long time in this case. Only this year did he appeal to the authorities again due to RICO accusations. 
And that still seems to be because of this case from 2016. Yes, but in the meantime, Maxo Cream was free, and in 2018 it came to a collaboration with an underground rapper from Houston called NFL Cartel Bo. The music video should really rock. For this reason, the music video was recorded in Lakewood Park, I guess because there is a lot of space here. Because otherwise, I don't see a reason, because the place is not really good. Because this park is right next to a primary school. And since it is completely strange and suspicious that dozens of men with weapons hang around a basketball court next to a school, it didn't take long for people from the neighborhood to call the police. But that's exactly the problem that made Max O'Cream and his boys problems later. Because most of the people who were present at this music video shoot are documented gang members who are pre-punished. And although some were arrested on site and most of them were able to run away, this music video caused a lot of problems in retrospect. Because the music video went viral. It was able to generate almost 2 million views after half a year, which is definitely very good for such an underground video from Houston. But the problem is the cops also noticed that. And yes guys, that was a gold mine for the investigators. After all, this whole case was still going on. I mean, people ran away from the police when this music video was recorded. And a high resolution music video with unmasked gang members who all have weapons in their hands. This is 4K! How did they get you in 4K? That ain't me. Yeah, that's how the investigation took its time and did their homework. And just six months after the upload of this music video, more precisely at the end of 2018, they snapped. A total of 20 men were arrested and charged for illegal possession of weapons and other accusations. That was a huge thing back then, it even made it to the news. They did it at about the same time school was letting out. Some of the kids actually got into the video. What also got in were about a dozen loaded guns, some of them stolen, that were being used for props. And the extras holding the guns, according to police, all documented street gang members. And one of these 20 people was NFL Cartel Bo. He was pre-punished at the time of the video shoot, and you can see in the video how he plays around with a gun in his hands. In addition, NFL Cartel Bo is said to have threatened a police officer. Despite these accusations, he was allowed to bring up bail, which he finally did. The only requirement here was that he was wearing an ankle monitor, but that's exactly what he didn't stick to. Police say he cut it off and disappeared. He's still on the run along with eight other suspects identified from the video. Four of them on probation or... And yes, people, he fled. But this flight didn't really take long because NFL Cartel Bo was arrested at Houston Airport only a little later. Finally, he was sentenced to six and a half years in prison. And yes, only a month ago, he was released again. Max O'Cream, however, came out of this matter completely unscathed. I mean, he wasn't even charged or arrested. That's probably because he didn't have a gun in his hand in the music video. The guys grow up under completely different circumstances, which we don't know in good neighborhoods at all. I don't want to judge that here in my own opinion. But bro, why are you recording such a music video next to a primary school? I just don't understand that. On the one hand, this is obviously morally completely rejectable. You just don't do that. You're not completely armed next to a primary school. And bro, that just doesn't fit. On the other hand, it is clear that the cops come here instantly. Besides, I don't understand why you're uploading the video even though you know that some of the guys you see in this video have fled. You could have at least censored them. It's obvious that the investigators will follow suit if they didn't get them all. What is your opinion? Let me know in the comments. The Bronx documentary is still coming, don't worry. I know I promised you that it would come. But I'll be honest with you, the project is so incredibly extensive. It's getting longer and longer and longer. I completely underestimated that. This will completely put my other videos in the shade. And quality is more important to me than quantity. So I'm going to take a lot of time with this video. I hope you understand that and have patience. Shout out to Trap Geek, from whom I got the inspiration for this video. Don't forget to comment and rate this video so that the algorithm is pushed. See you guys next time. Ciao, ciao.